Okay, welcome to this lecture, uh, log 500, uh, management models and operation analysis. Seems to be quite held up here. I saw yesterday that we had uh, more than 60 students sign up for the, the course. This room takes approximately 45, so uh, we might have to find another solution of the room problem if, um, if uh, there are so many people who actually want to take the course, but we will know more next week after the, the final sign up uh, due date. Um, my name is uh, Adil Hoff. I am uh, going to teach this uh, course uh, this fall. And uh, as you can hear, this course will be taught in English. We are, have some international students here. Uh, assignments and uh, exam can be uh, delivered uh, either in Norwegian or English, such that uh, voluntarily, so you can answer right in, in Norwegian and get your uh, your feedback uh, or, or my comments in, uh, to the assignments in, in Norwegian if you want. Uh, and of course you can talk Norwegian to me, uh, but if you have any questions in the class I will uh, try to repeat them in English and uh, also answer in English to make sure that everyone can uh, understand. Uh, also this uh, course we use the uh, HI Molde X system for video recording of the lecture. Uh, that can be used as uh, repetition if you are here and attend the, the, the lecture and also if you cannot attend one lecture you can uh, try to look at it uh, uh, afterwards. Uh, link to the uh, video files of the lecture can be found uh, from the Molde University College's uh, uh, web page. So, first today I will uh, give some general information about the course. Uh, I will also start with presenting one uh, technique for proving mathematical formulas, which is called induction, given in the uh, in a lecture note. And I will also start on the first part of the curriculum for from the textbook, uh, which um, treats uh, forecasting different forecasting uh, techniques. Uh, the curriculum in this course is uh, based on content from other courses, so you might have some uh, some basic knowledge of some of the uh, of the topics. Uh, for example, from the course uh, STM 200, Introduction to Supply Chain uh, Management, or similar courses. Uh, also, this course is uh, replacing uh, two courses uh, which have been been given earlier, uh, the Log 502, which was called Management Models in Logistics. This is some kind of continuation or, or actually a, a replacement of, of that course with a few other topics which is uh, more uh, uh, more focused than the old uh, uh, Log 502 uh, course. Uh, also the Operation Analysis course, uh, BK350, uh, that's 350, uh, will uh, contain some of the um, uh, topics treated in this course. So you cannot take this course if you have both or any of the two others and get uh, full credit for, uh, for, for this course. Uh, if you have already Log 502, you will not get uh, no new credits. If you have the Buff 350 course, you will get uh, full credits. I think it is approximately half, uh, half of the, the credits on, on this course. So, one important uh, well, so some important knowledge uh, you, you need to have uh, to take this course. Uh, you need to know some basic mathematics. We will uh, use mathematics in, uh, uh, in formulas. Uh, we have different formulas for different parts of, uh, uh, of this uh, uh, management models for, for different parts of the, of the supply, uh, supply chain. We start with forecasting. We'll have inventory management and, and different parts. We uh, need to find formulas, find optimal uh, values of different variables in, in uh, different uh, problem types. What is also important, to you should uh, learn, or if you don't know it already, you should uh, learn how to use Excel or, or spreadsheet, because many of the examples will use Excel. Uh, and also your, your assignments, you will, uh, uh, well, of course, if you, you are not uh, able to use uh, use Excel or any other uh, spreadsheet, it will be much uh, harder to do the calculations by hand. So you should try to learn that as soon as possible. I will uh, uh, show examples in in Excel. I will upload the examples after the lecture in in the student uh, administration system prompter. So uh, so you can be able to, to study my uh, my examples for for answering different uh, problems. Uh, you hopefully are familiar with Prompter. If not, you should try to learn it as soon as possible. Prompter is a student 
log into Frontier, you can choose between different rooms. You can choose either here. You have the log 500, for example. I have some different other courses here. You will have the courses you have signed up for this uh, semester. Or you can also log in or find or choose a room on the, from this uh, menu here. So if you now go to log 500, you can see I probably have some access to some more information that you have, but here you can find course information. This is uh, the sheet I uh, started to show in, in the start of this lecture. We'll come back to the details in, in a short while. You can also find the lecture plan. Uh, well, these codes were uh, originally used for by uh, by the the HMLDX uh, system. I might have a clean up here uh, later in, in this course, but here you also have the curriculum. You have the lecture notes, solution files, earlier exams, and you will have uh, one folder here for uh, delivery of assignments, so you can upload your solution to the assignment directly in Proctor. Or, as an alternative, you can um, also um, send it by email to me, uh, and of course you can hand in that paper copy, uh, but usually, well, uh, at least for, for assignment 2 and 3, um, you will use uh, Excel, for example, uh, or, uh, or also or, well, other program systems, uh, and then it's much easier to send in electronically instead of just printing out and, and uh, delivering a, a paper copy, but also if you actually want to do that, you, you should, uh, should do that. Uh, if we look to the curriculum here, we can see that we have three files. Uh, the main textbook looks like this. You can buy it at the, um, at the bookstore in, in the A building. Uh, Steven Namios and Production and Operation Analysis. In addition, we have a few, uh, three different files here, induction proofs. Uh, it's a small... Uh, PDF file uh, describing the um, technique of uh, proving mathematically by te uh, the technique we call uh, induction. Uh, this is also a part of the, the curriculum, and uh, I will present this uh, uh, this technique later today. Uh, I have two files here about introduction and modeling in lingo. This is uh, well will be. Uh, come later in this course. Lingo is a program system which is solving what we call the LP, linear programming problem, and finding the optimal solution for a minimization or a maximization problem when you have different constraints or, or restrictions. We'll come back to that later, but this Lingo system is a program system which you can uh, download as uh, at least a student copy. Uh, from uh, from a web page and be able to use and solve this uh, mathematically to, uh, to uh, and find the optimal values for, for the variables. Uh, here, uh, lecture notes, uh, as you can see, I have uploaded already this chapter two. These PowerPoint files are given by the authors of the NAMIAS textbook. It will um, present different parts of the curriculum from, from the textbook, and uh, uh, I will upload these PowerPoint files chapter by chapter. I have uh, I've not included everything from the original files because I've uh, selected what is important for the curriculum in, in this course. Uh, but anyway, before we start on one topic, which is described in each chapter, I will upload the, these files so you can follow me. Uh, because I will use these PowerPoint files in, in the lecture. Uh, yeah, solution, no solution files yet. Here I will upload the solutions to assignments and also to earlier exams later. I will not upload the solutions even if the exams from three last years are given here, so you can see already how the exams look like. Uh, uh, which type of exam, which type of problem you, uh, are, uh, you will probably get, uh, get on the exam. Uh, the this is given from the log 502 course. Uh, so, uh, but as mentioned, the, the curriculum is not very different. The difference between these, uh, between uh, the log 502 and, and this course is that we will focus a bit more on the lingo and the linear programming part than we did have done in the earlier years. But uh, 
uh, otherwise the curriculum is uh, identical so these exam problems are also relevant and uh, uh, and will give you an idea of uh, which type of problems you can get on your exam which come in December and here we have one folder for uh, assignment where you can deliver your assignment or if you deliver by email or, uh, or paper copy I will also upload the solution here and also give you some uh, uh, some feedback from for, for uh, your answer to the uh, assignment by commenting and then grading in in front of here okay so as mentioned if you don't uh, if you're not familiar with Prompter um, in advance you should uh, learn it as soon as possible because this is very important and it's all information and uh, uh, everything regarding uh, the course will be uploaded here in Prompter uh, yeah also first page and uh, you will have some use notes here I have uh, written this one first lex lecture should be today and obviously you have found this information either here or some other place uh, also here note that there will be no lecture September 3rd next Wednesday I will be busy first with a conference and then with a project meeting so next week I will be uh, busy with other things so there will be no lecture in this course so the next lecture will be in two weeks yeah also you have an email address on HMODLA, which is called the, stu the student email address stud.hmolda.no uh, with your name first and some information will be sent to the email address you should check this uh, regularly if you don't already do that Th that should be a good habit anyway because lots of information from uh, from the college regarding courses and also administrative information will be sent to this email address um, So let's go back to the course information sheet here uh, and the lectures on Wednesday from 9.15 to 12 in this room if we don't find another room we'll see uh, how many will actually attend the course uh, when we come to the uh, to the due date for, for signing up for, for courses. This is my information, uh, contact information by phone number, office or mobile phone and also my email and uh, as mentioned, the literature, the main textbook, Steven Namias, Production and Operation Analysis, looks like this, and it's sold at uh, the bookstore in the A building. And here we have defined the curriculum from the book, actually the first part of chapter two, even if it's not defined as a directly curriculum here, it's some kind of basic information about broadcasting. So you should go through that quite uh, uh, quite fast to, to get basic information and then we will come back to models and the formulas which, which we, can, uh, we should use in uh, from cha chapter 2, 6 and 2, 2, 9. Uh, here, chapter 3, the actual um, sub-chapters are defined here and the supplement to chapter 3 is about linear programming as I just uh, mentioned. How to uh, know how to formulate and solve minimization and uh, maximization problems when you have different constraints so you have different constraints that could be uh, well, several types of problems for example constraint in, in production you want to maximize uh, your profit but you have some limited uh, resources to, to produce uh, uh, or sell uh, the, the different uh, uh, parts or, uh, uh, or problems so we have chapter 4, chapter 5, chapter 6 is actually treated in another course, this is about general uh, supply chain management, so it's not uh, part of the curriculum in this course, but the first part of chapter 7 and chapter 8 are the curriculum and the lecture notes which I just showed in front of regarding induction proofs and the lingo lecture notes, how to use or, or uh, download and how to use uh, and formulate uh, lingo and LP uh, problems. And by going to this web page, you can find a trial version of the lingo optimization software. Uh, yeah, as mentioned, Prompter, use.
that standard communication between lecturers and students of all information will be uploaded in, in Santos. There are three mandatory assignments in this course. The first one will be presented in uh, two weeks, the lecture, the 10th of uh, September. Uh, this is a, the first one is a pass or fail assignment, so you need to pass to be able to, to continue on, on the course. Uh, it's not very difficult, hopefully not. Uh, at least uh, uh, it shouldn't be too much work, that particular assignment, but the two others, last two, uh, are a bit more uh, time consuming uh, and uh, a bit more, uh, yeah, hope probably more difficult for most of you. Uh, and they will also count for 10% each of the final grade of the course. So you will have two assignments counting for 10% each and the final exam, which will count for 80% of the final grade of uh, the course. Uh, preferably, you should work on the assignment in groups of two to four students, but if you have some particular reasons to want to work alone, you can just send me an email and apply for that. And uh, of course, I will not force you to, to join a group if you really do want to do the assignment alone. But preferably, try to uh, create groups of two to four students by yourself and you will be given grades with points from 0 to 100 uh, percentage correct and all needs to be passed to take the final exam and then the assignment will usually be presented within a three week limit before uh, delivery then you will have the exam on Monday the 1st of December and there will be a five hour exam and on the exam you can bring all your notes, you can bring the textbook for every note which is uh, either printed or, uh, or written and also a calculator uh, of course which might be necessary to do the calculation. Usually we uh, say that 40% uh, is the minimum correct to uh, to pass uh, one um, either if it is an assignment or an exam. Uh, there is no strict rules. Uh, of course, if you do a, a, a fair uh, try, I will not uh, just throw you out of the course if you have 39% on, on one of, of the assignments, but uh, uh, usually we say that 40% is the limit, which is 40% correct to pass one of the uh, assignments and also on the, on the final exam. Uh, we can also have a short look at the grading, just to make an example. If you first pass assignment number one, and then assignment number two, you might get 90% correct. Uh, and assignment three, more difficult, you will get 70% uh, correct. And the final exam, you might have 60% correct. The grading, uh, I, will, uh, I will, after each of the exams, uh, or each of the assignments, I will like, send you an email with, with your result and also some short comments to, uh, to the your answer to the different problems and sub-problems. But uh, the grading will be given in percentage as this, and then for the final grade, multiply by 10%, which means 9, and 7, and this is multiplied by 80%, which is 48. So adding these numbers together will give us a total score of 64. And this number will then be converted to, to grades. And F is not passed, and uh, uh, the exact borders between the different grades are not uh, uh, are not given. This is uh, will be uh, well. We can say that more than 90% will give you an A. 64 is a typical a, a C, and uh, as mentioned, more than 40, uh, less than 40% will will be uh, a fail. So this is the the way the grading of of the course will uh, uh, will be done, and your results on the assignments will be given as percentage correct. Yeah, as 
mentioned, we have uh, the additional uh, problem, uh, the induction proof, which we will come back to in a short while, and the two lingo uh, documents. And uh, lingo is one example of one optimization software. Uh, there are other softwares, and uh, as last from uh, earlier courses, uh, those who took the the previous operation analysis course, the BUS 360 course, then they used another software, uh, which uh, actually there is an optimization um, add-in for, for um, Excel, uh, which was used in that course. And some of you might also have uh, experience with, uh, uh, with the optimization part or the optimization add-in in, in, uh, in Excel. And there are other softwares uh, used for these types of problem. We have the CFLEX system, which uses the, the language uh, programming language of AMPL. We have Express, and we also have others. And if you have experience with any of these, you can also solve the optimization problem with these types of, uh, uh, of, uh, uh, of program system. So you're not necessary need to use exactly the Lingo system, but Lingo is very easy if you don't, if you don't have any uh, any experience with other program system, I will uh, uh, well encourage you to, to try to use Lingo because Lingo is very close to the mathematical formulation and for these types of problems you need a mathematical formulation and when you know the mathematical formulation it is very easy to code it in the Lingo system. It's a bit more tricky in some of the other uh, of the other uh, uh, softwares and in Excel you need to have the cell references and so on so it's a bit more uh, more tricky at least my experience is that Lingo is the easiest program system to use when you are dealing with, <coughs> with these types of problems and you should be able to understand and also formulate some simple LP and uh, uh, Lingo uh, models in, in this course because it is relevant and it's more relevant this year in this log 500 course than it has been previ uh, in previous years in the, in the log 500 system. Okay, well I have one more document to show. This is the lecture plan. Uh, and today, introduction, which I now have almost finished, and uh, practical information. Uh, and then induction, which was given in uh, the uh, lecture notes about mathematical induction, a way to prove whether formulas are correct or not. And then we start on the chapter two, uh, first chapter two six, maybe we can also, uh, we'll see how, how much time we use on this, maybe we can also continue to look at different techniques for forecasting uh, the market. And then we will use a few lectures on forecasting, which is given in chapter two. Then we continue to chapter three with the supplement regarding the linear programming. Uh, chapter three is about aggregate planning. So uh, there the book and the, and the curriculum is some kind of logical, uh, ha has some kind of, of, of logical uh, uh, build up. You start with forecasting and then when you have a forecast, you can start with aggregate planning. Try to plan uh, your production and or, or, or sales uh, in, uh, when you have an actual number, which is given from the forecast. Then in chapter four, we will uh, start by planning inventory. Uh, chapter four is about what we call the deterministic or fixed or known inventory. If you know exactly how much inventory you will need then uh, for the, um, the coming uh, period, then you, you should be able to, to make a plan for purchasing inventory and storing inventory. Uh, also, chapter five is about uh, inventory theory, but now we introduce the stochastic element or the uncertain element. So you don't know exactly how much. In chapter four, we assume that we have a fixed demand rate. You will have a demand of 50 items each week, for example. Uh, in 
chapter 5, we don't know exactly. We know the expected demand. Maybe we expect to have a demand of 50 each week, but this is variable. Some week we can have 45, another week we can have 60, and so on. So we need to consider the stochastic, or also, the uh, also called the uncertain element in the demand, which is more li uh, likely to be uh, in, in real world problems. Uh, then we continue with chapter 7, uh, and uh, chapter 7 is about uh, production uh, planning uh, techniques, or uh, uh, the MRP, mat ma Material Requirement uh, Planning. Also, we will mention shortly the just-in-time philosophy. We will not go very much into the just-in-time here, but you should know about the difference of the MRP and the just-in-time phil philosophy, because these are two different types of, of philosophy with the where uh, you either in the MRP uh, philosophy use the well we use uh, exact plans and make plans for for meeting the uh, uh, some 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 production or, or some demand while in the just in time we rather try to have everything when exactly you need it you should not have more inventory than necessary, and that is uh, is the well philosophy on, or the difference in, in these types of philosophy. We should focus here on the MRP philosophy because there is where we lead. We have the mathematical models which we will learn in this course, and then at last, chapter eight, regarding operations scheduling, trying to schedule different uh, orders on. On the uh, on the floor uh, on and with different machines and so on, you have lots of different orders coming in, and you need to make a schedule what to uh, what order to perform first, because you have limitations on machines or people or or any other some kind of limitation. And hopefully, last lecture I will be able to well, if there are some requests, I can do some repetition or also solve earlier exam problems. So, I think that was all regarding the introduction and practical information. And now I will start on the first part of the curriculum, which is a mathematical uh, proving technique called uh, induction. And here we have this induction proofs document. We <coughs> should now be able to use this technique to prove whether a statement or formula is correct, and we will prove it mathematically. This is only one type of proving technique, and it's also limited to integer or uh, whole uh, numbers. You don't have fractions. Uh, you can adjust the techniques in some, some way, but in, in general, you can say that this induction proof uh, the technique is used on integer uh, numbers. Uh, the textbook and the different formulas we will treat in this course um, includes also lots of other uh, proofs on the formulas which is used. I will not focus too much on the mathematics on, on these proofs. Uh, normally, I will not go into details. Uh, some of them can be rather complex, and this is not a mathematics course, but you should be able to use and you should be able to know when uh, or where to use the different um, uh, formulas. Um, if you take or continue your studies with uh, a master course, for example, I uh, I'm teaching a master course in inventive theory, and then we'll come back to some of the same formulas we use in this course, and then the proofs and the mathematical theory is a bit more important when you are on, uh, on higher level studies. 
but um, even if I will not uh, focus too much on uh, the mathematics uh, in, in this course, you should try to understand the proofs because they will give you some more understanding why this is so, why this formula is, uh, is correct for solving these types of problems. But first, uh, I will go more into these types of, of proofs called, called induction. And proofs are essential when you are trying to find a model of formula which is uh, used for a problem. Uh, you need to prove it to make sure if it is correct. Even if a formula seems to be uh, behave uh, correctly, only a proof can tell you whether it is correct. And if it's not correct, then a decision based on inco incorrect information can go completely wrong. So thus, induction here is used as an example of mathematical proving, and this is also a part of the curriculum. So there are uh, well, uh, exam problems. This is uh, well will, will also be a part of the first assignment, uh, and also for your exam you will get uh, or you can get problems regarding uh, mathematical induction. Uh, the idea of mathematical induction is that we know for sure that an initial condition is true. This is uh, very easy to find out. And when we know this condition, we will try to prove whether a hypothesis is still correct when you are increasing by one at a time. If we know that this formula or this hypothesis is correct for the number one, the variable has the value one, then we will try to prove if we increase by one, it is still correct. And if we can prove that, we can say that, okay, we know for sure one is correct. And we have proven that if we increase from 1 to 2, this formula or this hypothesis is still correct. And since 2 is correct, and we have proven by increasing by 1, it's still correct, we can also, well, we'll also know that it will be correct for 3. And since 3 is correct, it will be correct for 4 and 5 and 6 and so on. And up to, uh, well, infinity. So, the components here, which is also yeah, shown here as the four components in, in this document, uh, we um, can formulate it by four points. So, Induction, we start with here the thing you want to prove, and this is called the hypothesis. This could be a formula, it could be a statement, or uh, yeah, sim uh, similar thing. We have an hypothesis which we hope or think is true. Then we have what is here called the beginning step, or also called the initial step. And this is to find out, check whether this is correct for the initial or basic condition. For the value of one, or maybe zero, for example, on the variable. And if this is correct, if we find out that the initial step is correct, we will continue with what we call the assumption step. We assume that since the initial step is correct, we can assume that the next step, increasing by one, is also correct. Since the hypothesis is true, we assume that it also correct when we are increasing by one. And here we can say the n variable value could be either zero or one, or you can also start on another number, but these are the two uh, most common initial conditions. 
in the assumption set n equal to k we assume that for one particular value of the variable k that could be a random number or one particular number it is we assume that this is still correct and then we come to the induction technique which is called the induction set And the induction step means that we should now prove that the hypothesis is true when you increase by one. From one particular number k to k plus one. That's it. So these are the, uh, the four or the three hypotheses and the three steps in induction. First, we will find the statement or hypothesis what we want to prove then we show that this is correct for the initial value usually 0 or 1 we assume that it is still correct for one particular value k and then we prove that when we increase by 1 from k it is still true so I will show one example which shows this quite uh, uh, well, show the, the techniques here. This is the same example as used in, in this document here. We have a formula, and uh, or we have uh, we have a series of numbers, and the sum of the series is claimed to be given by the formula shown here. One plus 2, plus 3, plus 4, and so on, should also be given by, uh, or could also be given by the, num the, the formula here. So instead of adding all numbers together up to one particular n value, we can use this formula to find the exact value of, of this n. So, this is the hypothesis, or let's just refer to point number 1. We have the series 1 plus 2 plus 3 up to one particular number and this can be given by the formula n multiplied by n plus 1 divided by 2. This is now the hypothesis. We should try to prove whether this formula is correct or not. So, next step check this for the initial condition and the initial condition here will be well we start with one the first element in this series is one well, we should also add one number zero first but uh, it doesn't uh, well, zero is that doesn't give any meaning here so we start with the value n is equal to 1 and then we can easily see that the series of 1 plus but since n is equal to 1 we don't have any more elements so here on the left side of the uh, of the equation sign we have only 1 and n equal to 1 multiplied by 1 plus 1 divided by 2 2 divided by 2 is equal to 1 <coughs> this is correct we have shown here that the initial condition is correct the initial step here have shown that the series is cor correct for the initial value when n <coughs> is equal to 1 the lowest element in the series here and point 3 the assumption set now we can assume that this is still correct for the value k, which can be one particular value in this series. And then the uh, series will can be shown like this, up to k, n is a variable, k is one particular number, and this should be shown to be k, k plus one, divided by 2. So this 
this is now the assumption. Since the initial condition is true, we can assume that for one particular number k, this is still true. And now, this is the tricky part of the induction proof, we have to show that when we increase by one, this will still be true. I think we'll take a break 